Hey, today we're finishing up our series called React or Respond. There are four things we need to incorporate into our lives if we were to see the world more clearly or more specifically see the world as God sees it. Now, if you can remember, it's pause. Now, if you can remember, it's pause, ponder, partner. Pause, ponder. Now, if you can remember, it's pause, ponder, and then it's partner. And today we're going to be talking about pursue. So let's listen in on this conversation between Pastor Stan and Pastor Lori as we wrap up the series. Slide. Glad to have you uh, be in this last message in this sermon series. I hope uh, you uh, have been able to sense God uh, moving and uh, just kind of a review. Uh, we first talked about pausing and then uh, pondering. And uh, then uh, last week we talked about partnering. And today we're going to talk about pursuing. And uh, Kotz kind of introduced this under the heading of uh, react or respond. Uh, and I just wanted to, to clarify something a little bit that we aren't saying one is better than the other. We're, we're saying that uh, both have to be recognized and that truly to live is to recognize both aspects and not not let one override the other in a, a negative way it's like uh you know people talk about wanting to grow and i think growth is a great concept but bad things grow too so you have to evaluate the growth and if it's bad growth you want to stop it if it's good growth you want to continue to encourage it so uh in your in our journey with uh, emotions and uh, the uh, responses to those emotions, I hope that uh, you will be able to embrace them. And that's really what this passage is about that we're gonna close on. It's about embracing uh, emotion. So uh, I'm gonna have Lori read from John uh, chapter 21. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Okay, Stan, what did, what did you notice in this passage? <laughs> the, the emphasis of Jesus is on the relationship or the emotion because his questions to Peter are all related to love or, you know, what are you feeling and what is going on inside of you? And uh, Peter doesn't really have words for it, but he says, I think where I am is uh, where I need to be and I'm ready. Uh, so it's a statement of trust on Peter's part. So, uh, and so Jesus doesn't, uh, question that he just gives instruction but then he doesn't elaborate on the instruction he goes back to the emotion and so i think this is an example of what, what we were talking about that this is a process pause ponder uh, partner and pursue is not just a single state and then you move to the next state and then you move to the next state 
it's a continual process. And, and so this passage to me represents the, the nature on which God partners with us is God is going to go after the emotion, going to go after the relationship. And so the first thing I notice about this passage is Jesus's emphasis is, is on love, which is what we talked about last week, that the abiding was because he, lo he, he loves us. He chose us. He wants to be with us. And on Peter's part, it's about uh, wanting to, well, I feel like I want to experience that love, so I want to trust it. So I want to pursue it. I want to go after it because it's good. And so I, I see two things happening here. One is Jesus is talking about love and Peter's talking about trust, but they're all, they're all in this process. And uh, I think that's what we want you, uh, everyone to experience in this uh, pause, ponder and partner and pursue is to be involved in the process, to, to, to have a, a relationship that is uh, dynamic. And this is so good because I feel like a lot of times we, like I probably said last week, we think about the doing and what does God want us to do? But I love how you bring out the emotion. So how would you summarize the connection between um, love and trust? So uh, I think of God's love as like in the song, it talks about a reckless love. And in Romans, it talks about that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not, and it lists all kinds of bad things that can feel like God's love is, is not there. But he says God's love is unstoppable, Paul says. And so I think the first thing is that God has a reckless love for us. And in that reckless love, what he invites from us is what I would characterize as a ruthless trust. And that's what he basically is inviting Peter to because he, he talks to Peter about, uh, you know, when you were young, you used to do whatever you wanted, but now when you get older, you're, you're gonna have other people do things to you. And so can you, basically, can you trust me in that? And, and will your trust work through all, despite all those circumstances, will you stay with me? And uh, he believes that he, he will. And I believe that, that, that God continues to pour his love over us to, to instill in us that ruthless trust. Uh, I get the term ruthless trust from a quote from Brennan Manning. And uh, let me share it with you. And he defines ruthless trust as this. Ruthless trust is an unerring sense way down deep that beneath the surface agitation, boredom, and insecurity of life, it's going to be all right. Ill winds may blow, more character defects may surface, sickness may visit, and friends will surely die. But a stubborn, irrefutable certainty persists that God is with us in our struggles to be faithful. And there's a lot of things I like about this quote. Uh, one is he starts off by talking about a, an unerring sense way down deep. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants. He wants way down deep, not just uh, on the surface or where we can control, but basically where we can't control, where it's, it's all being yielded to him and we're turning it over to him and allowing him to, to build in us that sense of uh, an unerring sense that that's where we want to be. And I like also the fact uh, that he talks about all these negative things that will come up when we go after that. He, he talks about a surface agitation, boredom, insecurity of life. So willing to, to do the trust God doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden you get this sense of, okay, I've got this handled and, and I, I think there is, it, it's, it's this unerring sense, but not necessarily an overconfidence or not a pride or not a, a, a judgmental kind of thing. And then it also talks about ill winds may blow, more character defects may surface, sickness may visit, and friends will surely die. So even the circumstances 
in which we live will not necessarily change. In fact, he's saying uh, there's going to be a lot of bad circumstances. <laughs> uh -huh. And then, but his his statement is a stubborn, irrefutable certainty persists that God is with us in our struggles to be faithful. And I think that's a, a key is in that is the part of God is with us in our struggles, that God isn't outside of our struggles, talking to us as we're struggling by ourselves. He is with us in those struggles and, and that he knows it's hard to be faithful. He knows it's hard to, to live this life. And he's not saying, you know, uh, you can do it in the sense of just try harder. I believe he's saying we can do this together. And, and we don't have to uh, believe that we're going to lose. Because if you think about it, this was at a point in time where Peter had denied Jesus three times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that we could get into the, the three restorations and things. But I think for me, the times when I struggle are the times when I think I'm just a loser and I don't have what it takes. And God, you got to send somebody else and do and, uh, just rescue me. And, uh, you know, I'll just take a, a uh, place where uh, I don't have to struggle. <laughs> and that's not what God is, is saying, is that it's going to come from being able to know that I'm with you. And I think that's where the pause is the ponder is what do i see you doing in this and then the partner is asking him to well come help me in the in what you're asking me to do or what where i see you working and the pursuing is saying uh and i want to do this with my whole heart i want to do it without any false things in my heart so uh I thought we could do this with uh, making this connection by reflecting on uh, this song. Maybe in the in reflecting on the song, we could think about uh, the last thing that in this passage that Jesus says to Peter is, "Follow me." Mm. And uh, so, what does it mean to follow him? And I think to follow him means that. In, a, in the deepest part of us, we have this ruthless trust. That, and we don't get that by pretending we have it, or we don't get that by trying harder. We get that by being genuine and authentic before God, by bringing all these bad things up and saying, I need you to be with me in this. And I believe that that's what he does. He comes alongside. So, uh, so maybe two two reflection questions to think about is one if jesus were to ask you do you love me how would you respond and two is what adjectives would you use to describe your trust in god at this point in time so to me the key is uh pursuing is deciding on a response of ruthless trust fueled by the reckless love uh, that God gives to us. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and for your vulnerability. And I think these questions are, are, are really good and helpful. Um, so we'll just let Daniel um, lead us in this time of worship.